Welcome to the Realtor for Hoopers podcast. When I pull up with my dogs, we gonna ball like swish. No, I ball like No, I ball like Welcome to another episode of the Realtor for Hoopers interview series. Today we have Mike Puccio, which is uh, who is a wonderful, great friend of mine. Uh, he is, I, I don't know, I, he's one of the top people I know that just loves hoop and everything about it. And so, and not only is he a hooper in his own right, but he also is the head coach here at Green Mountain High School, home of the Rams. Sure. Um, so Mike, I'll uh, start with the question we start with everyone is tell us your basketball story. Yeah, I uh, I fell in love. I was probably twelve. Okay, and I played growing up since I was about four. And anyways, uh, Green Mountain back in the day was top twenty-five my freshman year in the country. So uh, we had our work cut out for us, yeah. and um, wasn't the ideal uh, career. Um, yeah. Ended up having a great senior year and going to a Northeastern Junior College. After that, uh, played for Hall of Fame coach Lowell Rumpf. Um, good two-year career. Met some incredible people and. Uh, Went and redshirted at Fort Lewis under okay. Hall of Fame coach Bob Hoffman. Uh, didn't work out there for whatever reason. Then finished at uh, CSU Pueblo with, again, Hall of Fame coach uh, Joe Folda. So I yeah. had some incredible coaches, uh, mentors to yep. help me uh, through those developmental times for sure. Right. So then when you're getting through high school and college and all of that, did you have – you know, do you, were you at a point where like, hey, I'm going to try to go play overseas at all? Or was it always like, hey, after college, I'm done. And then I want to start being a coach right away. What was, what's the transition from player to coach? Sure. Uh, I was actually doing both. So in 02, I was my sophomore year at Northeastern. I was, I was coaching for the Colorado Chaos. Okay. So I was coaching and playing. I think I was 19 coaching 16 year olds driving across the country. Uh, it was crazy. But um, so I, I did both at the same time. And to be honest with you, from a coach, I think I was able to start making bigger leaps as a coach when my playing career was, was pretty much over. Okay. Um, I did mess around with overseas thoughts, um, played on the, the IBL crossover team with Jonathan Barnett and those guys. And I mean, I, I realized pretty quick that, um, you know, yeah. I, I wasn't going to be able to make that happen. Um, and, and teaching was calling me and I had received the jobs. And uh, yeah, so after that, luckily for, you know, through IBL and, and Jonathan Barnett and, um, Darrell Middleton with the ABA, I yeah. was able to keep the game yeah. in my life and, again, meet great people from yeah. all walks of life. And, uh, yeah. Good. Yeah, because I, I think it's – from everybody that I know that's a coach, the vast majority of them were all players at sure. one point. Very rarely is it like all of a sudden I'm a basketball coach. You've played at some point, sure. right? So it, there's always a period or a point in their life where they have to kind of shut the player mind off a little bit and start sure. the coaching mind. And, For sure. and so that's why I was just curious the way that was. Because I've never, I, all the years I've known you, I've never asked yeah. that question. Well, and so. it's a way to keep the game in your life. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, with the Achilles rupture I had and, and you know, I was 37 approaching 40, you know, what, what are we doing? I'm getting yeah. injuries and I have a family. And so the, the, the coaching piece is a way to keep the game. Absolutely. In, in my life, it's not the same, but, yeah, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it's good. For sure. Yeah, cool, it's good. Man. All right. Well, um, well, with coaching, tell me about kind of a player or, a, you know, a season that you're kind of most proud of. So I just finished my 17th year as a head coach. I, I know that's hard. I don't know if I could put – I'm, I'm so proud of all of them. And I know that's a, a yeah. cliche, cheesy answer, but at the end of the day, like they all accomplished so much. Yeah. Like I go back to a, a 2011 Stanley Lake team. We won two games. That was a tough season. Same team come back the very next year, win 16 games, wow. most wins in school history. So, I mean, every group has their own mm -hmm. potential, their limits, their ceilings and, and, you know, I mean, even fast forward to this, this year, we started two and seven. Um, the football team, our four best players, they went to the final four. So we didn't get our guys back till December 1st, starting two and seven, finishing 16 and nine. Yeah. Um, had the state champs on the ropes down to one possession. Yeah. Um, yeah. So to answer your question, I mean, I think all the teams that I've been fortunate enough to work with yeah. in those 17 years, um, I'm proud of all of them in, in their own individual ways. Yeah. And I mean that. I try to keep in touch with a lot of guys. I need to do a better job, but um, man, nothing makes me happier than seeing these guys 
get married and have kids. And it, that's, it's, it's incredible. I mean, I knew these guys as, as, as pups, man, they were yeah. teenage rambunctious teenagers and now they're men. And yeah. it's, it's just, it's, an, it's been an incredible journey. Yeah. I'm sure that, you know, it's something that I, 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 I would say I'm, I'm envious of not ever getting into the coaching is I'm sure there's so many stories of like, this guy was at this level or had these weaknesses or in, and, and you, and over the course of the four years, you have him to get where he is as a senior sure. and just to watch not only their growth as a player, but their growth as people mm -hmm. and all of that. Sure. It, I, I'm sure it just, that becomes, I don't want to say a drug. That's the purpose. That's a purpose. But, the that, purpose. but that's is what gets you continuing to do the grind sure. of being a coach For every sure. year For is sure. seeing that progression and yep. growth. You know, and, and, and I have uh, two former uh, players on staff. Yeah, uh, that I coached here my first time around when I was a JV coach here, and, and I, we're another one's joining us from Stanley Lake, and our weights coach is a Stanley Lake guy. So I don't know, just to to still have those guys yeah. in my life, and they want to work with me, and they believe in what I'm doing is it's humbling. That's cool. It's humbling. That's real cool. Yeah. Well, sweet. Well, um, next question is: is that for any young player, whether it's, you know, a youth guy that's eight years old or, you know, a middle schooler or whatever, like if you can try to, is there one kind of thing you would suggest or one part of the game or one skill, whether that's an intangible or a physical skill that you would kind of suggest for those people coming up, those players coming up now? Yeah. I mean, if you look at my, <laughs> my stature, um, I, I'm pretty proud of what I was able to accomplish yeah. at my size. And, um, there were two things that I did. I think, well, one thing that I did better than anybody was I just outworked everybody. Yeah. Um, and guys that have played with me know that um, I'm going to defend and I'm, I'm going to win every line drill and I'm going to dive yeah. on loose balls and I'm going to do those little things, you know, to, to equalize guys like you, that's six, yeah. four guys, yeah, right? Yeah. So, or bigger. Um, so, I mean, just play as hard as you can. Yeah. Um, play every game like it's your last um, and, and just enjoy enjoy that work as hard as it is. And then the other thing is just shooting. I mean, if you can't shoot the ball in today's era, you don't, you don't have a chance. Yeah. You know, unless, unless you are six, five with crazy bounce, yep. you know, you're going to be fine. Yeah, but, you're a crazy athlete. Yeah. yeah. To, uh, if you can't shoot the ball and, and yeah. we, we see it here. I mean, we have guys that AJ Maher is a, a great example. He's a senior here. He's six foot and um, he, had to, he had to survive for every inch he got, but, he turned into a shooter. He used yeah. our shooting machines at 7 a.m. every morning and we had time for him. So I think if, as a young player, if, if, if you play really hard and you can shoot the ball, you're going to make any team. Yeah. I always tell my, my, uh, my 10 year old is now fully hooked. Yeah. He's fully hooked into basketball and just now he's fully focused on anything he can do to get better. I love it. And a story, and I, the story I'm continually trying to teach him is like, Hey, yeah, continue to get better in all your ball handling and all your, shooting and all those things but if you approach every practice every game as like i'm gonna play great defense and i'm gonna hustle my butt off mm -hmm. there's just always gonna be a spot for you on for the sure court. there's always. always there's always a glue guy a need for a glue guy there's like that. a coach loves it and yep. i don't care what how the game changes over the course of 50 years yep. or whatever there's always going to be, there's a coach always just loves that guy. That's just going to grind. Yep. So your shot's going to be falling. Your shot's not going to be falling, but right. if you're consistent in the hustle and defense, you're going to be just fine. Yep. You know, no, so that's, that's great advice. Yeah. That's a, I, uh, last till last. Yep. For sure. So, all right, well, here we got a fun question now. All right. So I like to kind of incorporate these, I will call them barbershop debate questions. Okay. So what current player, or past player played in the wrong era. So you can go from like a current player that he needed to play in the eighties or a nineties player that needed to play in the 2010s or whatever. So okay. that's, and I got one too. I got well, an answer too. It's, it's gotta be, I mean, it's pistol Pete playing in the wrong era in college. I mean, his NBA career wasn't the same as college, but um, he played three years in yeah. college they statted how many more points he would have had with the three point line. I mean, the guy played without the three point line. It's crazy. Um, and only playing three years and I, Caitlin Clark respect. She's so fun to watch, but breaking that record, it, it's kind of a, it's, it's not the same. It's not apples to yeah. apples. So pistol Pete um, playing with a three point line in college would have been incredible. 
Yeah. Um, even just like even just the way he played. Oh yeah, it was with modern day flair, basketball with the flair he did yeah. and the swag he yeah. did. Like he would have, like he would have fit right been, in. He'd have been a star. We're like then it was. It like, you know, there was even stories of like people having to get used to the sure. way he played because sure. they were trying to take it out of him. Well, like, he hey. was hitting people with the ball and stuff. With yeah. Passes and yeah. 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 Uh, the other guy has got to be Will Chamberlain. Um, you know, I, he had a hundred point game. I know there was no film on it, but allegedly had a hundred point game. He's had multiple 60, 50, 40 point games. Yeah. Um, the guy never subbed out of the game. I don't think he ever fouled out of a game. Yeah. Um, and I've heard that his 40 time, his, his standing, um, uh, standing broad jump and his vertical were similar to LeBron. So you look at a guy back then, <laughs> just, he's, he's a freak. And, and yeah, I mean, that's a guy that would have, I think, been very successful in yeah. today's game, especially I, with all the space. He'd have been good in the nineties with the physicality, uh, with the two postmen and, and, He'd be great in this era with all the space. I mean, he's yeah, be incredible. Just have him be the, uh, have him be the kind of the baseline, like the dunker spot they call oh, it. That like where they yeah. like the point guard breaks it down, throws it up. Yeah. Uh, they, I mean, he, he he. They said he had a fifty inch vertical. So yeah. there's the stories of him taking the the uh, corner off the top of the backboard. And, yeah. But if you look at his height and his, his reach, I mean, it, it is possible that the guy could take a quarter off the back, For sure. which is crazy. And I think what's, what's, what's with guys like Wilt and LeBron and guys like that, what I think is kind of very interesting about them is they're such um, physical athletic freaks yep. that I think you can kind of throw them into any era yep. and they're going to be successful. I throw Shaq in that. You, you, those are the three guys, in my opinion, that physically impacted the game. Yeah. More than anybody. Yeah. Cause you like, even if you throw LeBron into like, like, like the, like the late eighties, early nineties, and he's playing against the great. bad boy Pistons. He's been great. He's just fine. He's yeah. going to be able to match up to that, yeah. you know, all that. And he's as great as he is now. Right. But, so my guy, and it's a small tweak. So it's a, I don't want to say it's a cop out, but it's a small tweak, but I, w I would love to see Dirk playing yeah. today. Yeah. I agree. Where, cause when he first that's started, good. when that's he good. first came out, like, it was like, oh, this is a seven footer that's like shooting fadeaways and doesn't want to go down low. Doesn't want to go down low yeah. and whatever. And luckily he got paired with like Don Nelson, who was a coach that was willing to do things differently and, sure. and, and accept the way he played and sure. whatever. But like seeing him as a, like a, like a space out four yeah. and like, yeah. I'm like, I would love to see I mean, what he could do now. Like KD before KD in essentially, exactly. right? Yeah. We're being able to like how, how efficient he could get with sweet, shooting spot up threes sure. and things like that. Like sure. I, I would love to see uh, that. Guys like him change the game. I mean, the pick and pop and all that kind of stuff. Cause he did play in that era. Like you're talking about with two post players and yeah. no space. It was still having the traditional Correct. four and he was Correct. like the non-traditional four. But. Correct. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah, He's just more. to see, like, because the weight, re, one of the reasons why he was successful on that pick and pop is because the four is not, he's used to like drop rolling, coverage, drop, drop, yeah. drop yeah. coverage, and then the pop is, oh crap. Yeah. You know, like, and he shoots it. Yeah. Nice so. and high, too. He shoots yeah, it. Yeah, so, yeah. So, that's a good one. All right. Well, before I ask you the last question, I want to acknowledge you for something. I want to acknowledge you for, like, man, the amount that you show up for the basketball community, whether it's, people that you know that you know and love that are past players or families that you've known and connected with um and obviously with people like myself and are willing to support and grow not only your program but just Colorado basketball in general is extraordinary your ability your ability to continue to show up even through headaches of being a coach headaches of whatever high school you're at or the ups and downs of just life and all of that. It, it's, I, I, I noticed that and it's extraordinary your ability. It's not normal. So just know that I want to acknowledge you for that. Love you. So, um, and I obviously greatly appreciate you just from a man to man and as a friend. Same. Um, Same. so just know that what e people are noticing, whether they ever say anything to you, cause I know sometimes coaching can be a thankless job. Sure. You hear a lot of crap more sure. than you get a lot of thanks. So sure. just know everyone's noticing because, yeah. um, it means a lot. Yeah. Thank so, you. Cool.
We appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right, well, last question. What is your favorite thing about hoop? And I know it's hard. Just what you said. Yeah. Um, you talk about, so I've played on three college teams, my high school team, and then the two semi-pro teams that were in Denver yeah. for a while. And you talk about 10 guys, 12 guys per team and from all different walks of life. Yeah. And no matter where you're from, religion, this, that, or the other, when you step in between these lines, it's, it's a brotherhood, right? For sure. And you're talking about, it's earned because you go through something. The first day of practice, it's good. Everybody's clowning. Well, especially playing against guys like me, fights ensue. Yeah. The competition starts and, and you go through some stuff. Coach mm -hmm. is mad. You're running suicide still. You can't, you know, you can't yeah. see anymore. Um, you go through those things and, and those bonds are unbreakable. I, I talked to guys from, I mean, it's 25 years ago. Yeah. And, and sure. when we get together, it's, it's like a day hasn't gone by. For sure. So, I mean, just uh, all the relationships, I mean, it brought us together. Yeah, for sure. Um, other guys that you've had on this show, uh, it's, it's brought, I'm, I'm friends with some yeah. of those guys too. And it's just incredible the, the bond that's created from all these people from all, all different walks of life. And um, it's a beautiful game. There's, yeah, there's, sure. there's nothing better, man. man it's the best it, game in the world. Yep. I, uh, I don't know. How, the reason why I started the whole Realtor for Hoopers thing is that the community of basketball players just means so much to me. Sure. Like, and what are just ways that I can just do my part and keeping it going and staying connected sure. w while also helping you know build people up and all that? Because, yeah, I mean, just like any player knows, like you can, um, you can. At the end of your career, the thing that everyone misses the most is the camaraderie of it. Locker room. It's the locker room. Yeah. Like the bat, like playing or not playing is one thing, but it's just the people and the sure. relationships and all that. So, sure. um, yeah, I would agree. It's a great thing about the game, man. It's the best. All right, Puccio. Love you, man. Appreciate you um, uh, making the time. Appreciate you all that you do. Um, and God bless, man. Yeah, thanks. Thanks Appreciate for having me. Right. When I pull up with my dogs, we gonna ball like Swiss. <laughs> No I ball like No I ball like